Welcome to the last set of news. I get top stories in crypto and bring on to bite-sized pieces. Today, we have basically a novella or a soap opera. And what's really going on is that there was a motion put forth by Ripple, a legal document, which is asking the SEC to produce documentation, which could expose their employees as trading cryptocurrency, more specifically, trading and or holding XRP. Uh, we'll take a look at what's going on there in the actual uh, legal document. Also, we'll take a look at Solana as it uh, makes its uh, continues on its impressive run. And then lastly, we'll take a look at uh, if Robinhood is in big trouble. And it's all about order books and what's going to happen. So we'll go over all those things. But first, let's take a look what's going on into the market. So today it is uh, Monday. It is the 30th of uh, August. And um, we went down a little bit. Yeah, a little bit uh, below 2.08 trillion. Let me blow this up so you can see what I see. And uh, sentiment is still around neutral. So I was 48 over 100. And uh, again, we're using Trade the Chain for sentiment analysis. And Bitcoin price has been pretty stagnant, 48,000, 49,000, somewhere around there. So kind of boring in that regard. But what's not boring is what's going on with all the different altcoins. And more specifically, if we take a look at uh, the darling of the day, uh, which would be Solana. Solana is up massively in seven days, 51% in seven days, 18% in a 24 hour time frame, and most everything else is a little bit red, except for Ethereum up 3%, so that's pretty darn good. But man, 18%, that's crazy. 1% for Chainlink, watch out and 11% uh, for Cosmos and things like that. Uh, if you're a big uh, trader, take a look at uh, what's going on here. It looks like uh, Celo. I think there was some, some major action going on with Celo. Horizon, Redcoin, Nano, and Radium as far as uh, the big movers over the next hour. And again, this is all trade the chain, links in the description. So let's get into what we all came here for, shall we? Which is a nice little piece of information that has to do with <laughs> motion set forth by the Ripple legal team. And this is an article that was just put out a couple hours ago where Ripple files motion to expose XRP holdings of SEC employees. And I'm not going to go over the whole article because it's, uh, it's, it's good. It's just uh, I can paraphrase really quickly. So what it is is Ripple filed a motion, a uh, legal document. And what they're talking about here is that there's a, no, a new motion document seeking to bring clarity to whether the SEC permitted its own employees to trade XRP, which as the regulator's allegations is an unregistered security. First of all, if this comes out to be true, this would look so bad for the SEC, for them to come out and go, yeah, you know, we did this, but uh, you know, some of our employees were, were trading these securities or these cryptocurrencies. And it looks, it would just look awful. So that is the basis of the whole article. Um, the court has given the SEC until September 3rd to respond to the latest emotion. So we've got, you know, what, three days uh, to, to get going. So that's just the basics. Now, if we want to dig into it, uh, here's the actual motion. And I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's, uh, it's a ton of pages. Uh, but here is what I found the most interesting. So this is from the legal team, right on behalf of Defendants Ripple Labs, Inc., uh, Garlinghouse and Christian Larson, to request conference regarding the SEC refusal to produce a certain information necessary to complete understanding of the SEC's trading policies governing digital assets and whether the SEC permitted its own employees to, <laughs> to trade XRP. That's insane. And then lastly, this is what I found most shocking. Uh, we met and conferred with the SEC on this issue on July 8th, July 15th, August 18th, and August 25th without progress. Meaning they put this all forward and said, we'd like to see your standing operating procedures, your policies and procedures of what your employees can do as far as trading and holding cryptocurrency digital assets. And we've, we've asked for this information, it looks like four times. And now we're going for the fifth and you've got until the third to actually come up and cough up the juice. And, uh, Again, I cannot stress this enough. If it does come back that any, and it doesn't really matter if it's, if it's a high level employee or low level employee, it doesn't really matter. Because can you imagine the backlash of what could potentially happen if it does come to light that one of the employees or a handful of the employees of the SEC came out and said, yes, we were holding X, Y, Z, holding this crypto, we were trading. I, if it does come out, it'd be amazing. I would hope not, but if it does, you can see a speedy, expeditious uh, closing 
or perhaps maybe a settlement of this case, but we will see. You only got three days and we'll see what happens. However, I will say this, uh, having been sued myself in the, in the good old days of another business that I have, uh, there are always loopholes and there are always things that lawyers can bring to the table to extend these types of things and to actually work around the wording of what is going on. Don't expect this motion to get denied or to actually for this case to get put aside anytime soon unless there's some kind of uh, uh, sit down and uh, slap on the wrist type thing. Anyhow, that is it with that story. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Insane. Let's move on to our next piece where we're talking about Solana. And just like what we said, I mean, Solana is just on a huge tear. There's no other way to say it. And I got to say, thanks to Mike, the investor, and thanks to James over Vest Answers for always talking about Solana. And uh, I have been dollar cost averaging Solana for months and months and months now. And it's, uh, it's become a pretty big hold, I must admit. I didn't expect it to be. And uh, so thanks to those guys. Also, I'll be on with Mike, the investor, Thursday. So I'll tell you all about that, that, uh, that appearance later. But this is what's going on. Solana is number eight, I believe, right now. And it could definitely break into the top five. So Solana, this article talks about, you know, why is it going up so fast? Well, it says here transactions up to 1,582 transactions per second. I don't think that's true, actually. actually. So if we take a look at the actual website for Solana itself, it's a great website, first of all. But you can see right here, let me blow this, decrease this a little bit. So live transactions per second are 1669. That's what's happening right now on the network. But if you take a look at the white paper and the different documentation, you will see that actually Solana can actually get up to 50,000 transactions per second. And how fast is that? Well, just as a comparison, <clears throat> Visa, 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 the, the global payments leader, does around 1,700 transactions per second, and it brags that it can do 24,000 per second. Uh, and that is only the transactions per second, not the finality of when everything gets settled. So if you're taking a look at what's going on in blockchain, uh, Solana is one of those, you know, big guys. And then if we want to take a look at, there's always a big question, which is the, the trilemma, which is you can solve one thing, but there's other two other things that you have to solve. So it's all, it's all about decentralization, uh, security and scalability. And in one of those things, there's always going to be a lackluster uh, approach. You can only, you know, do so much security, but if you want to scale, you have to, you know, cut back on some other things. If you want a decentralization, then you got to cut back on a little bit of scalability. But Solana, from what it looks like, because they've, and a lot of people said this, they're trying to solve that. And they said that they really have solved that issue. And some people will tell me, and I was actually watching George today, Crippers R Us, he brought this up, that people were complaining that there's not enough, it's not very decentralized. But you know, in all honesty, I mean, look at this, the validator knows they have almost almost a thousand. I mean, that's way better than EOS. I'll tell you that right now with their 23 or whatever it is or or Neo or whatever else. So, I mean, hey, a thousand dollar nodes, I'll take it. Transactions per second pretty well. And it looks like they're scaling pretty well uh, also. And then as far as security, seems to be pretty airtight so far, so far. And uh, even uh, uh, Sam Bankman over at uh, uh, FX, FTX the Exchange, he's actually put a lot of money into this because his group tried to uh, uh, break the system. And they found out that they couldn't do it. So as far as uh, scalability and all those things, looks like it's pretty good. And then one thing I want to bring up is that this low cost forever. Solana's scalability ensures transactions remain less than a penny for both developers and users. Now, if they can keep doing that, that's amazing. Because on other projects, you can see, you'll say like, if this is only 0 .00, you know, 0.001 ETH or 0 0.01 uh, Avalanche. Well, that's great right now. But what happens when the price goes up to, you know, 500, 1,000? 1500 bucks, uh, then it doesn't become so cheap. So if we're talking about a penny, that's pretty good. And then fast, of course, we talked about. So, I mean, that's just one of those uh, pieces of the puzzle. And then also, one of the things you got to realize, which I had to do a semi deep dive into this is that Solana does do proof of stake, but it's really proof of history. And uh, I'll be doing a deep dive later, but in all honesty, I mean, to actually do all these proof of works takes a lot of different power, a lot of time. So with proof of history, instead of just doing, you know, bundling all these transactions together and then putting a, a, a block hash into it, they just say, okay, we're going to do a transaction, then a previous transaction hash. And then they could do it again on the second and third. And you can go back at any point in time and find all these different transactions, which is a lot better than having all these different hashes and all these transactions in a blockchain format. So proof of history is one of their big things. And then 
to get back to the article, I should say, is this, is that Solana, as far as the price goes, has gained over 4,300% this year. And to really break that down and to see just how uh, ginormous that is, if we just take a look at today, I mean, you had a price of $94 and it went all the way up to 111. That's just today. But if you take a look over a one-year time frame, just how much that actually has gone up, I mean, you're looking at, well, let's take a look. We're going all the way back to four bucks just a year ago, just a year ago, 31st of August, 2020. And it's gone all the way up to this point to a hundred dollars. Imagine that. And then we take a look at the max. I mean, this thing was below a dollar not too long ago and it hasn't even been around that long. So uh, I know the CEO has a, has a big history as far as like Qualcomm, Qualcomm and telecommunications. And uh, that's the way that they actually work things out. So I think just the price in itself is enormous. And I think it's going to do uh, pretty well. And then to finish this up, one of the big things is that Chainlink partners up with them, provides data for smart contracts on the Solana blockchain, is a game changer for dApps, which I'm pretty sure that Chainlink also does that for other different projects as well. So that's really not a big thing. But here was another thing I found interesting. Asset management firm Osprey Funds registered the first Solana fund with the SEC last week. So uh, this is the, actually, I haven't been paying attention to uh, this little snippet of information. Would have been good to know last week. I'm sure a lot of you already knew that, but that's news to me. So yeah, if you've, uh, if they put it through the SEC and uh, they registered it, well, that uh, sounds uh, pretty good to me. But another thing is that as far as like Chainlink goes, uh, just so you know, there was a tweet by Solana just a couple hours ago, and it says uh, over 100 teams integrating Pyth network data one week after launch on the mainnet beta. And it says a few short weeks, 100 plus teams building on Pyth prices and 25 plus financial tech giants across six countries contributing pricing, building a critical piece of, of DeFi. And I was like, what the heck is Pyth, uh, Pyth network? And if you don't know, I'll link it in the description, but Pyth network is another oracle. Uh, that's exactly what it is. Uh, solving DeFi's Oracle problem. Decentralized finance relies on high fidelity, time-sensitive real-world data, but has no way to access it. And uh, we deliver a decentralized cross-chain market of verifiable data from high-quality nodes. They don't even have a white paper out yet, and there's not even a token. So if they're doing all these things, and they've actually already reached out 100-plus teams and 25-plus uh, tech giants, I think uh, a lot of the people are here. So... Again, uh, Solana could really is uh, melting faces, and I think it could be just enormous. Just one of the reasons why it's going up. But again, uh, if you get some, if you give people what they want, which is fast transactions, cheap transactions, and they're secure, that's all we need. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our last piece, which is a quick snippet. And actually, uh, my friend Alex, Alex Mascioli, tipped me off on this one. Uh, this was the SEC in the news again. SEC chairman says banning payment for order flow is on the table. And this just came out five, three hours ago, four hours ago. And uh, in an interview with Berrons on Monday, SEC chairman Gary Gensler said that a full ban of payment for order flow is on the table. What is that? It's a practice where brokers send trade orders to market makers, execute those trades in return for a portion of profits. And Gensler sums it up perfectly. He says they get the data, they get the first look, they get the match off buyers and sellers in that order flow. Why is this important? Why is this such a big thing as far as uh, them putting it on the table? Well, the reason is, is because the payment for order flow is how uh, Robinhood subsidizes all of those free trades. Basically, they give the information to all these brokers and they match it up and they pretty much say, hey, we don't have to give you that uh, great price that we promised you because we have our other uh, market makers, and that's who we're going to cater to. So uh, I'll, I'll read it for it real quick. Order flow payments are banned in markets like Canada and the UK. Why? Because the payments discourage brokers from obtaining the best trades for their customers, violating the, breakers, the broker's duty to get a customer the best execution on a buyer's order. So basically, they're screwing over people twice. That's really what it comes down to. And then, of course, those brokers can see who's buying what, who's trading what, and who's doing it put that through a bunch of data. Before you know it, you got a bunch of winners out there that are not you. So look, that is what is going on. If they cancel 
uh, that that's a big chunk of revenue for Robinhood. So they're gonna have to find a new model. Perhaps maybe they have other ways to generate revenue. But if that's the case, you know what's gonna happen with Robinhood and all those people that trade over there? Like, you know what? If you're gonna start to charge us like crazy, uh, and then all the things that you do behind the scenes, which we know what they've done before, as far as AMC and all the different things, all the slaps in the wrist, we're gonna go someplace else where we can get a better ROI and uh, the uh, percentages of, uh, of trading, uh, as far as fees, aren't so darn high and the returns are much, much higher than stonks. You know what that is? Cryptocurrencies and digital assets. All right, so look, that's it for the news today. So if you made it all the way to the end, first of all, I wanna say thanks. I appreciate you staying all the way. If you liked that video, found some value, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about in this channel are time sensitive, but that's it. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.